Hellebores really are one of my favorite all-time plants, and they're just the fact that they bloom in the dead of winter is really spectacular. We're gonna go take a look at a collection of these Easy Care perennials you're gonna wanna have in your garden. I'm here in Lewisburg, Tennessee with Judith Luna, and she has got an absolutely amazing collection of hellebores. Um, you've clearly been collecting for quite a long time. I have. Um, gosh, I don't even know where to get started with all these varieties. <laughs> this one right here, I believe is Pink Frost. I believe it's, so. It's one of the original uh, crosses, species crosses, and it's good and bad. Um, it doesn't drop babies, but it is, it's, it's a sterile one because mm -hmm. of its cross. It's really nice. Do you know how long you've had this one here? Probably 2013. Wow, so almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really wide. It's probably a foot, foot and a half, two feet across. And the cool thing too is that it has a little bit of a, a dustier gray foliage. Mm -hmm. Um, and it also probably blooms very, very early. One of the first. One of the first. Do you, do you know about when this one starts flowering? Probably December 28th. Oh gosh, so it's like a true, it's one of the nicknames is early. Christmas Rose. It's very early. Um, yeah. The earliest I've had is December 13th, but oh, wow. not that one. Yeah. Um, those there, the green one, is uh -huh. about that time. So that's very early. Yeah, you can you can about see about twenty uh, December thirteenth. Because most of them are in seed in seed form right now, so it's bloomed um, quite a while back. I think I had ten in flower by maybe January third or fourth this year. Yeah. Every year's a little bit different. Yeah. And that's to me that's the excitement of it is it's <laughs> it's dead of winter, and there's flowers coming up. You know, just starting, just emerging, and that's. The it's real a, magic of them. It's amazing how graceful they are in the snow. Yeah. And after they're frozen overnight, they just pop back up when it hits 45 degrees, and they're right. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I see you have quite a bit of the um, Helleborus orientalis, which mm -hmm. is the majority of the green ones. Um, and that's where we get some of the really bright colors and the doubles and the anemones. Um, this is a really pretty one right here. Uh, do you remember the name of this one? I believe it was apricot blush. Yeah, it's really nice. It's got sort of a, a pinkish yellow mix. Um, and so this would have been the mother plant. And then you can see around where these do drop babies and, and you get little seedlings in there that'll eventually you know grow for a couple years. And then these are actually offspring of this mother plant. Um, Look at that double flower in there. I noticed that this morning yeah, that's for the neat. first time. Um, so yeah, so this would have been the mother colony and it drops seeds and you get you start to get a ring of new plants around the edge that'll, and the, the fun of it too is they could have, the bees will cross them with who knows what. So the, the if you're not doing it on purpose and bagging the flowers, you know, you get all kinds of fun hybrids. Um, I had bees the first week of January pop up. Oh, that's and so fun. And then it got really cold again. Yeah. Yeah, so we go from, you know, some of these these kind of paler colors to some pretty dark, dark ones over here, which is really nice, too. I love the dark flowers. Uh, do you remember the name of this one? It may be Roman Red. Roman Red. And it's really, it's got Possibly. a, really got a ton of flowers on it, too. And this is a double form with two to three mm -hmm. sets of, of petals in there. And it's really happy right here. Yeah, that's that's really nice. So this is a really sought after one, mm -hmm. um, this really clean white one, and it's also a double. It's really spectacular. This is, to me, this is one of my favorites, uh, this solid double white. How does it compare with the Linton Rose, the classic? Uh, so, the, so this is an Orientalis. Correct. Uh, oh. um, and, to me, the, the classic Linton Rose is a Helleborus Niger, mm -hmm. so that'll be a single white, and it blooms very, 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 very early, and mm -hmm. that was some of the ones we saw previously. Um, it's also a little shorter, um, and they start white, the Helleborus Niger, and then they fade to green. So the majority of these that we're seeing right here that are with this height are uh, Helleborus Orientalis, and you get a little bit of a bigger flower also. And most of the, these are the ones that will cross to the, the Helleborus Niger, typically won't seed out for us here. So this one they call either semi-double or anemone form. And you've got that, that pronounced 
uh, regular pedal out here, but you get this double red, uh, double ring of, of little miniature pedals in the center um, that's just really charming. It almost looks like a little neck, like a little mm -hmm. neck brace <laughs> around the, the stamens and pistols. Um, but I see this, this is a, a whole collection of a series, I believe, right here, right? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, what, what series is this? This is the wedding series, wedding party series, I believe. Okay, yeah, I see some of the tags. Uh, the first dance, which is kind of a, a yellowy, um, which is a really nice, a really nice soft yellow. Um, I believe there's like a, a bridesmaid and a, a, is it dark and handsome? Would this be the groom? Uh, that looks like the groom, yeah, kind of that darker, uh, dark bow tie color. Um, yeah, these are these are really pretty. There's there's been several series of them out um, in the past ten or so years that are that are really fun. And that's to me that's kind of the fun of them too is collecting the ones with the different fun names. You see the even the leaves have a bit of purple and dark in them. And those are seed pods coming already. Mm -hmm. You can almost see on the edge of the leaf it has a bit of a dark purple oh, in it. I see that. Yeah, yeah that's. That's neat. So this is a really pretty full white one right here. Tell me mm -hmm. about this. I liked it because of the model leaf. Mm -hmm. And it has really been a good bloomer. So we've got a different species right here. This is a Helleborus fetidus. And it, it pulls up these big stalks right here. So this is a new stalk of a new growth. And then next year, it will actually bloom out the top and you get this mass of, of little bitty bell flowers. It's a really cool um, different species of, of hellebore, Helleborus fetidus. Some people also call it uh, bear's foot hellebore or uh, stinking hellebore. It doesn't really smell that bad, but it does have a bit of a, um, an earthy fragrance to it. So we're under this big old grand tree. Osage orange? It's an Osage orange tree. Uh, very cool. Um, so it's kind of a perfect location that gives you some direct sun and then some protection during the heat of the day, which the hellebores love. Um, what's your kind of maintenance routine for, for the, the hellebores? Um, as soon as it's sort of warm enough, I come out and cut all the dead leaves off from the winter time. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wait until the f flowers start up and mm -hmm. have a base and then I, surround them with uh, composted manure and um, then I feed them with just maybe one or two doses of the tomato miracle Grow food about 50 percent okay and I water them with that and then I mulch around them but not on them and mm -hmm. that's it yeah <laughs> for the entire year right right <laughs> so that's why they're so easy yeah and know. I know they're deer resistant they're yeah. rabbit resistant which is the I mean, here, that's such a, such a great thing because yeah. you don't have to worry about, you know, keeping animals that's from true. eating them. Yeah, I plant hosta, the large green, dark green hosta up there. Okay. All through here and here. And then a stilby in there and the ferns. Yeah, of course, and ferns. All these hellebores will stay, what, a, a foot and a half? Not much taller than or this. So. Yeah, they, so they stay pretty, pretty low. And then when they get all the leaves mature, they get a little heavy and yeah, and uh, but it protects that undergrowth, I think. Right, right. So in the in the late spring, starts throughout summer, this is just a whole nice big lush yard of these big green leaves, all and that's, year, which is beautiful too. So it's whether they're flowering in the winter and looking spectacular, or just being a really nice lush greenscape. Well, this has just been so charming. I, I really have enjoyed, you know you sharing your collection with us and just, you know, talking about these, these wonderful little gems. Thank you for coming and I probably have a few more questions to ask you too. Yeah, we could probably <laughs> talk for a couple hours about it. Probably. Easily, <laughs> yeah. so. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.